Should social media influencers, YouTube reviewers and bloggers be booked for negative film reviews? Can they really make or break a film? Should freedom of expression be restricted in the name of commercial interests? These questions are being debated by the Kerala High Court as well as by the Malayalam film industry and the general public after a filmmaker went to court over review bombing. So what is review bombing? What is the legal battle over it? And what have been the reactions to this issue so far? Let me explain. Review bombing means to flood the internet with negative reviews of a product, a video game and even a film. The term has been banned about in Kerala after a filmmaker named Mubeen Rauf approached the Kerala High Court seeking a seven-day ban on online reviews following a film's release. Mubeen had directed Arumalindya Aditya Pranayam, which released on October 6th. He alleged that anyone with a smartphone can give a negative review of a film and even dismiss it entirely on the same day of its release without even watching it. He said that these negative reviews can have a detrimental impact on the newly released film as well as on the makers. He also alleged that some social media influencers and bloggers were blackmailing him, threatening to post negative reviews if he didn't agree to pay them to promote his film. He also alleged that such unchecked proliferation of online film critics and bloggers who engage in negative reviews poses a threat to the film industry's creativity and financial stability saying that there is an imperative to strike a balance between freedom of expression and the hard work of filmmakers, Mubi demanded that the union government frame guidelines and standards for online film critics and bloggers. So how has the High Court reacted? 1. The court has called for a close watch on online platforms to ensure that anonymous and malified reviews, or in other words, reviews done in bad faith, are not circulated. The court has also directed the police to take action under the IT Act against anonymous negative reviews. 2. The court has issued notice to the Union Ministry of Information and Broadcasting to establish clear and transparent guidelines for online film critics and bloggers. The Union government has told the court that a competent authority is looking into the matter. 3. The Kerala High Court has made a number of observations. A. It has tried to make a distinction between fair criticism of intellectual property and a pernicious attempt to extort and blackmail. B. The court observed that freedom of speech and expression should not be used for justifying a crime. The court even went on to give an example, saying that if you go to a hotel and you don't like the food, you're entitled to your opinion, but you can't use it to blackmail. Just as Devan Ramachandran said that there is a thin line between bona fide and malafide acts. C. The court has also observed that film reviews are meant to inform and enlighten people, not to destroy and extort. The High Court's directives are already seeing an impact on the ground. Seven online movie reviewers were booked by the Kerala police in October for negative reviews of the film Rahil Magan Kora by Ubeni Ibrahim. The filmmaker had filed a police complaint alleging that these online movie reviewers were using social media platforms to post obscene comments and negative reviews on the day of the film's release. He also alleged that they were threatening to harm the film if he proceeded legally against them. Since then, the producers of the film Bandra, starring Dilip and Tamanna, have also approached a court in Tirunandapuram seeking legal action against seven YouTube reviewers for review bombing. The makers of the film alleged that these online reviewers deliberately propagated negative reviews to mislead the audience and this impacted the film at the box office. But what do those writing reviews have to say about this entire issue? I spoke with film critic and entertainment journalist Saumya Rajendran. I started off by asking her what she made of Mubeen's petition seeking a seven-day ban on movie reviews after a film's release and what she made of attempts to bring in regulation and guidelines for film critics. So, a film, when a film releases, uh, within its first three days, mostly its fate is decided at the box office. Uh, and we call, uh, you know, the Monday test, right? Uh, how does the film do on Monday? Um, so, if the film has been liked by the audience, then on Monday, you don't see a, a very significant dip. So, people are still going to theatres, maybe for late evening shows to watch the film. And by the time the first week is over, you very well know whether the film is going to continue to grow or if it is going to have a very short runtime at the box office. So if you talk about film reviews, 
film reviews are written for the audience to make up their mind whether they want to watch a film or not primarily um the, it can they can also serve as you know a kind of uh, they can be educational to people who want to learn uh more about the craft of films it can also help filmmakers figure out where the film has not worked but primarily it is written for the audience uh to tell them whether or not this film has worked for that particular critic so if you say that you know a uh, film critic should write their reviews 7 days after a film has uh released then you're pretty much making the whole thing redundant redundant because people have already watched the film they've already you know its fate has already been decided so why do you need the review at that point nobody is going to read it um so i think uh, the film industry needs to understand that film reviewers are not writing reviews for them basically it, it is being written for the audience yeah so i think these guidelines also see everything is very subjective film the a film itself is very uh, subjective how it is being perceived by people is going to be varied because it is an art form it is not a science so when you're writing about a film it is one person's opinion about the film so uh, how exactly are you going to frame these guidelines because some filmmakers are not okay with any kind of criticism being made on their film so if you say that uh, you know the language should be polite then how are you going to define polite uh, because there are various instances where uh, even respected film critics they tend to be respectful towards uh filmmakers who come with a certain canon of work whereas they uh, they take it upon themselves to you know um to have a lighter moment with less established people this is also uh, because of the way that film journalism works uh, where you uh, uh, often a reviewer is not only reviewing films but is also doing interviews is also participating in other promo events concerned with the film so there is a certain amount of networking also that happens within entertainment journalism so you may find that a film critic is uh, you know respectful towards a certain set of filmmakers but doesn't see it necessary uh, doesn't deem it necessary to be that way towards other people so this may come across as a bias but that is the nature of film journalism itself um but can this be uh you know can you like really regulate this i don't i don't think that is practical at all many point out that for years now the film industry has encouraged a culture of paying for positive film reviews and while legal action should be taken against anyone who blackmails filmmakers booking someone simply for writing a negative review is nothing but an attempt to censor and silence critics i feel that uh the film industry itself has fed this culture where they pay uh, pr people they pay uh, you know online influencers to promote their film so uh, when you go uh, on twitter for example on the f- uh, early in the morning for any big film that's releasing you will already see people talking about it you'd already see people saying that the first half is very good and you know interval block is great the film wouldn't have even had its first show so there is, there is a pr machinery that is already at work so they complain about this when it goes against them uh there are instances where uh, uh producers have claimed that a rival producer has you know paid the, has has is behind negative pr for a film and so on but what i have learned from all the stories that i have done on the film trade is that uh, ultimately it is the word of mouth of the audience that really decides the fate of a film so it is the first set of people who go on a friday to watch a film if they like that film they tell their fa- friends and family about it and that's how the word really uh, uh, you know spreads and this is especially true of the malayalam film industry where increasingly we see that um, there is th- the star culture is breaking down in the malayalam industry it's no longer enough if there is a big star in the cast to bring crowds to the theaters i, I mean people hear about the film but after the pandemic they make up their mind on whether they should watch the film in a theater or not based on the word of mouth that the film has so even if a film is very good if the audience uh, that goes for the fdfs shows if they dis- if they feel that you know you can wait for the film to come on ott to watch it then you see that the film doesn't do so well at the box office and then there are a lot of discussions happening online after the film comes out so um 
when i say that a film review can be educational it also depends on what sort of reviews people are seeking out not everybody wants to learn to read about the film's craft and what that you know particular shot meant and uh, how did the music uh, you know aid anything in the film or uh, how what did the editing department do not everybody is interested in this most people just want to know whether the film is good or not so they seek out the reviewers who appeal to them who tell them what they want to know and that's why each reviewer has their own audience and that's why they and that's how they build their audience also so if everybody is going to say the same thing then there is no uniqueness in the whole uh, you know reviewing um, field so uh, i feel it is very it is a very Uh, you know difficult it is very difficult to say who is a bona fide uh, critic and who is a malafide one of course if people are blackmailing producers then that is a different thing then they can always go to a court or whatever with the evidence that they have saying that you know this is happening but my point is also that even if somebody is threatening that i will give a negative review for your film it's not going to affect it at the box office if people genuinely like it So negative reviews can do no damage to a film's prospects, but there are some occasions when a film review can in fact have an impact on the box office. Listen in. No, I think the only time when film reviewers can actually have an impact on the box office is when a very small film releases that nobody knows about and uh, film reviews, you know, help generate uh, word of mouth around it. so uh, otherwise you know films that come out with stars in it or even well known actors or where people already know about the film and are going to theaters there is no impact uh, that a negative review can have on the film and um, i also feel that film reviewers uh, you know uh, the, our job is to uh, to to uh, express our honest opinion about a film and if we are not doing that if we are prejudiced in some way i feel that ultimately the uh, the readership or the viewership uh, if you are a youtuber is going to distance itself from you so just as how uh, the audience can move away from a particular director or a star because they are they are no longer you know giving them what they want i feel that readers and viewers will also move away from a film critic if they feel that this person cannot be trusted anymore so uh, we also build a relationship with our uh you know respective view, viewership or readership so and that is something that you need to respect that is something that you need to cultivate if you want to be if you want to continue being read and uh, viewed so i i'm sure that most film critics and uh, uh, youtubers even take this very seriously and uh, i don't think that uh, people are just randomly saying things just to you know put a film down and if that is happening then uh, um you know they are going to lose out on their audience ultimately So are film critics an easy punching bag for the film industry? One report in the Hindu pointed out that a majority of Malayalam films these days are failing at the box office. So the question is, should producers be looking inward rather than pinning the blame on film critics? So I think the Malayalam film industry is going through a difficult phase because, like I said, in the Malayalam, uh, you know, the Malayali audience. Uh, in uh, kerala has the highest internet penetration in the country and a lot of them have switched over to uh, watching films on ott platforms during the pandemic so they don't see why they should go to the theater to watch a film unless they feel that it gives them that kind of theatrical experience so that's why you see that the you know top films at the kerala box office are actually not malayalam films they are uh, films from the telugu tamil and the kannada industry like kgf2 leo leo is actually now the number one performing film at the kerala box office so this is so what does this tell you this tells you that the audience that there is a shift in the audience it's not that leo is such a spectacular film and uh, nothing made from the you know kerala uh, film industry has can match up to it that that is not the case but the audience has decided that there is a certain kind of cinema for which they will go uh, to the theater and there is a certain kind of cinema that they are content to wait and watch on ott platforms and i don't think they are bombing at the box office necessarily because of the quality of the films i think it is because uh, of the shift in the audience especially the kerala audience uh, which has decided that they will go to theaters to watch only a certain kind of uh, film so if you look at the films that have worked at the box office in recent times they've all been films that people want to go and watch with their friends and 
uh you know family they, they're not serious films these are not films that where you want to sit back and think about something and process it these are films where you can go and have fun um so you take a film like uh, dear friend which had tovino um darshana rajendran and a bunch of others in the cast that film didn't work at the box office though it is a pretty good film and it got a lot of rave reviews after uh, it released on uh, netflix i think but it did not work at the box office because it is a serious kind of film and it also has a very sober ending so it's not a film that leaves you on a high or it's not a film that you know makes you laugh it's not a film that you want to enjoy with your uh, friends so um whereas you take a film like jay 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 hey which also had darshana in the lead that's a film on domestic violence now you would think that such a subject uh, is not something that a large number of uh, the audience would go and watch but that film made over 50 crores and that's because it's it was made in a very entertaining way it was a film that made people laugh it was made as a comedy so that film worked very well uh, even though it was led by a woman actor uh it did extremely well at the box office so uh you take a film like alone which had mohanlal in the lead that mid uh, that film didn't even make 1 crore in kerala it was completely rejected at the box office and that wasn't a good film either in my opinion anyway so you see that these are three films one film which i think was pretty good but didn't work at the box office one film that i liked very much and worked very well at the box office and one film that i did not like and did not work at the box office but had a major star in the cast so um it's not just the quality of a film that is the deciding factor now it is also what the audience believes deserves a theatrical watch another uh, film that did very well uh, during uh, you know onam is rdx which was an action film um and it released along with dilkar salman's king of kota which was made on a budget of 50 crore now uh, king of kota was extensively promoted it was also uh, you know a film that uh, that had big stars but rdx did better than uh, king of kota because people liked that film you know more even though it is uh, it was made of uh, you know a smaller budget that film worked very well at the box office because it is of the action genre it had uh, it, you know it was about three men uh, bonding and uh, you know taking on the villains and so on it worked very well and they preferred that over king of kota so there are small budget films which have managed to go past this but again they have not been serious kind of films they have not been um films that you know uh, that that you can just sit and watch with your popcorn without thinking too much so uh, i feel that this shift is responsible uh, largely for uh, malayalam films not being able to get the audience back into theaters and blaming reviewers is not really going to help i think producers need to understand that the audience has changed and they need to figure out ways to deal with that but not everyone in the malayalam film industry was a gag or negative reviews like superstar mamuti for example who said that a film success is not based on reviews and that reviews and films should take their own paths he also pointed out that the audience watches a film of their choice and that they can decide for themselves if they like it or not news laundry the news minute news laundry the news minute news laundry and the news minute are coming together saath aa rahe hain five states two independent media organizations and one team so log on to newslaundry.com contribute to the news minute and news laundry election fund joint election fund tnm nl joint election fund to hamara sahyog kare contribute now because we are stronger together kyunki saath saath milkar hi hum sab mazboot honge kyunki sage apa mazboot rasa kali si unte ne balanga untam we are stronger together and we are even stronger with you